this is lesson 7.5. You should be on page 459. This lesson is called Solving Special Types of Linear Systems. Up to now, we have only solved consistent independent systems. Now remember, this vocabulary term, consistent independent systems, meant that each system of equations would only give you one solution. That's what we just finished our chapter quiz on that you had um, taken today. You found each of these questions had one solution. But that's not always going to be the case. A linear system can also have no solution or infinitely many solutions. If a linear system has no solution, it's called an inconsistent system. I would definitely get that in your notes. And if a linear system has infinitely many solutions, it's called a consistent dependent system. And I would make sure you remember these three terms. That could easily pop up on uh, chapter test, multiple, cho multiple choice type questions. Consistent independ independent systems have one solution. Inconsistent systems have no solutions. And a consistent dependent system has infinitely many solutions. Now, how do we tell you know, which is which in, in each case. Well, let's quickly turn ahead to page 462. You will see this picture at the top of page 462, and, and we're going to go through, again, we have three ways of solving a system, graphing, substitution, elimination. This is a picture via graphing how we can see if the problem has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many. Now, if you draw a graph and you have two lines and they're meeting at a point, that's going to be one solution. You practiced that earlier in the chapter. Now, I want to point out a couple things that are important about if you have one solution. Do you notice the lines intersect each other and they have different slopes? That's a big one right here. If the lines have different slopes, they're going to meet at a point, and that's going to be a one solution problem, which, remember, is called a consistent independent system. Now, if you were to graph and you drew two lines that are parallel to each other, like you see here, this would be a problem that has no solution. But I want you to notice these lines have the same slope, but the y-intercepts, maybe I should highlight that, the y-intercepts right now are different. <coughs> so if you draw a picture of parallel lines, when you use the graphing method, that's no solution. These lines would have the same slope, but you notice the y-intercepts, let me highlight them in blue, these have different y-intercepts. The third scenario that could pop up would be when you have two lines that coincide, which means one line drawn on top of the other. In fact, you're drawing, they're the same line twice. Okay? That would mean that we have infinitely many solutions. In that case, you'll notice the lines have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So look at these slopes carefully. If the slopes are different, you automatically know you get one solution. If the slopes are the same, you notice same slope, then it's either going to be no solution or infinitely many. If you have different y-intercepts, it's going to be a no solution. But if it's the same y-intercept, same slope, that's infinitely many solutions. Let's take a look at a sample problem. Here I'm on the bottom of page 459, you can see, and this sample problem. They want us to show that the linear system has no solution. So I would recommend, as I told you back in Lesson 7-1, rewrite each equation in slope-intercept form. So this equation, you can see my work here, there's my equation in slope-intercept form. For my second equation, there's the equation, and Here's my work right down here in slope-intercept form. And you notice, if I take out my highlighter, these two have the same slope. That means they cannot, this can't be one solution. But you notice how the intercepts are different. Intercepts are different. That means that these are two lines that are parallel. And you can see we graphed them here. Um, here's uh, intercept of 5 and down 3 over 2. So uh, this, kind of just highlighting that line, that's this equation. 
and I'll take a different color marker, a yellow one for this equation, which would be intercept one, um, and we're going down three and over two, and you can see that line here. These are parallel lines. There's no solution. Now, let's say that we were solving the problem by elimination. How would I tell it's no solution? Well, let's, let's eliminate these. So set up both equations in standard form, which they are. You notice I can subtract to get rid of the x's, so I'm subtracting. Let's do that. 3x minus 3x cancels. Oh, 2y minus 2y cancels also. So when I say cancels, that means it equals 0 on the left. 10 minus 2 is 8 on the right. Do you notice how I have a false statement? Whenever your variables disappear and you're left with a false statement, that means that you'd have no solution to the problem. <clears throat> Here's a sample problem that has infinitely many solutions. I solved the top equation for y. I took away x. I divided everything by negative 2. There's my equation for equation 1. Now look at equation 2 and let me get my highlighter out. I want you to notice a few things. Do you notice how they have the same slope and they have the same y-intercept? That means these are two lines right on top of another. That's infinitely many solutions. Let's say I was doing this problem by substitution. You notice this is an easy substitution problem. Y is already by itself. I could take the half x plus 2 and substitute it in for y, which they're doing here. And if I distribute, I would get x minus x minus 4 equals negative 4. And look what happens to x minus x. They cancel. So I'm left with negative 4 equals negative 4, which is a true statement. Since it's a true statement, that means this system would have infinitely many solutions. Let's just try one down here. Tell whether the system has no solution or infinitely many. Let's, we'll just do this problem right here. Um, I can eliminate the x's if I just add these equations together. So let's do that. 5x plus negative 5x eliminates. 3y plus negative 3y eliminates. I have 0 here. And 6 plus 3 is 9. This has no solution because that's not a true statement. Sometimes, sometimes they don't even want us to answer the problem. They just want to know how many solutions the problem would have. Like the book will ask you today not even to solve. They'll just say, how many solutions would this system have? If that's the case, you don't even have to work out the problem. You can find how many solutions a system has if the problem is written in slope-intercept form? Maybe I should underline that. Okay. If you have the problem in slope-intercept form, you can identify the number of solutions by looking at the slopes and y-intercepts. So look at this little table real quick. Slope and y-intercept number of solutions. Now we talked about this um, on page six, uh, 462. If you have different slopes, think about that in your head. If you have different slopes, doesn't that mean the lines will eventually touch? Well, if they touch, you're going to get one solution. So this is easy. If you have different slopes, you're going to have one solution. If you have two equations in slope-intercept form that have the same slope, but now different y-intercepts, picture that in your head. Same slope, different y-intercepts. That would be like maybe two lines kind of like this. Like here's my y-intercepts are different right here and here, but the slopes are the same. Can you see how those would be parallel lines? That's going to give me no solution. If you have the same slope and the same y-intercept, that's when you're going to get infinitely many solutions. I would probably pause the video and copy that table down right there. Okay. Let's actually look at that now. Okay, I want to find out how many solutions my problem has. They're not asking me to solve. They just want to know how many solutions I have. Okay, so it says without solving. All right, do we have one, none, or infinitely many? Well, let's check. In this first problem, in this first problem, I'm going to write both these in slope-intercept form. I'll take equation A. I'll subtract 5x from each side. Let me quickly do that. Take away the 5x here and here and you get y equals negative 5x minus 2. In the second problem, I'd add 10x to each side, which would give me negative 2y equals 4 plus 10x 
I can divide everything by negative 2, and that's going to give me negative 5x minus 2. Do you notice how these two pr equations now have the same slope and the same y-intercept? This is going to have infinitely many solutions to it. If I go to part B, let's try this. I'll solve the first equation for y to get it in slope-intercept form. And you notice when I do that, I got that. And then I'll take the second equation. I'm going to quickly solve it for y. And when I solve for y, I get this. Well, let's look at it carefully. Same slope, different y-intercepts. Those are two parallel lines that do not touch. This would be a system with no solution. You could have word problems that solve out to either no solution or infinitely many because there's not enough information. So be, I'm not going to go through the sample. Just be aware that when you have a word problem, and I'm not trying to be tricky as a teacher, but it's possible that you might not be able to solve the word problem due to insufficient information. Here would be an example. This person is setting up a table. And it says here, um, she orders a set of prints for each of her two paintings. Each set contains regular prints and glossy prints. And you see, in one order, she ordered 45 regular prints and 30 glossy prints, and the other 15 and 10. We do not know the price, so we'll call X and Y. So you notice, 45X plus 30Y equals 465, and 15X plus 10Y would be 155. So this person decided to use elimination. They took the bottom equation and they noticed, hey, if I take 10y and I multiply it by negative 3, I'll get negative 30y and I can eliminate. But here's the problem. Look at the rest of the work. When you multiply 15x by negative 3, you get negative 45x. When you add these up, those eliminate also. Now I got 0 on the left and on the right, I got 465 plus negative 465. That eliminates. This is giving me infinitely many solutions. I don't have enough information to solve the problem. So just be aware of that. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.